Hello everybody, welcome. Um, I'm in the outside part of the uh, studio at the moment and what I'm doing is I am working here uh, on the kiln. Um, I've got very delayed in trying to get the kiln um, put back together. Procrastination as much as anything, laziness, um, but needs must so I've, I've actually really got to get down there now and get it put back together. I just wanted to show you what I was doing though. Um, I, I did do a clip once uh, about this and I gave up doing what I was doing because the outer sheathing here had all given away and burnt through if you remember. So I'm utilizing another one of the one of those rings and I've cut fresh slots as you can see here, here and here. The, the two the two that we can see on either side there and there are for the burners and this one in the middle here is for the um, for the chimney flue. And it looks like there's a bit missing a bit missing there. It's not a bad cut as such. A bit broke off. It's very fragile this brick, you know, when you work with it, it, it crumbles and cracks and so there is actually a bit missing there I've got to put in. Anyway, um, what you're seeing there is actually, and I'm just going to try and do it now. Oops. Let's put this camera on a tripod and then just see if we're in the picture. Because what I've got to do is I've got to take that ring and I've got to invert it the other way up. Oh yeah, there's that bit I was talking to you about. This bit here goes goes in there. Anyway, um, so what I want to do is take this. camera. I know that a lot of you are interested in this kiln and so you should be because it's a good it's a good little kiln it works well and it's now what I've got to do is you can see there how I've got these bricks here you see now these let's remove those I'm gonna to have to hoover this out because uh, not hoover, vacuum is the word I think in the USA they say. We say hoover it out because <laughs> the machine was, used to be called a hoover. But anyway, vacuum it out of the dust and the rubbish in here. So you can begin to see now a bit. The next thing is, let me just explain for those of you who, who, who don't know. This, this kiln is fired with two weed burners. So, a weed burner, what is a weed burner? This is a weed burner. One of these guys. These are about $25 you can buy. And I've got two of those, one on each of these on each side, you see, going in. The flames are gonna go in and up to the top of the kiln, and then they're gonna come down, and they're going to come underneath here, and down here, in this flue here, this chimney flue. Now, I'll just show you how the next stage, and that is to take this bat, this shelf, and put it, put it there, like that. This, this acts as the bottom shelf of the kiln, you see? So the next shelf goes on top of that, and maybe one more on top of that. I don't want actually too many shelves, because too many shelves... Let's turn that fella off, it's making rather a noise. 
too many shelves, uh, you can block the flow of the, of the flames with too many shelves. Um, so the next thing I've got to do is, uh, what I've got to be careful about is that the flames that come in on either side don't just do an about turn here and go straight out the chimney. I've got to put some deflectors here so that means that the flames are going to come be deflected upwards, upwards. Okay, and this is the this is the good thing about a downdraft kiln is that we're not just putting the flame in from the bottom and it's just going straight out a hole in the top because that gives you a lot of temperature difference between the top and the bottom. The idea is to create a longer path for the flame so that you allow the flame to go up to the top of the kiln but you don't allow it to escape at the top of the kiln. You force the flame down again, you see, and it finds its own way out through via the bottom of the kiln out a chimney stack built on the side here. This idea works very well and it's not necessary to have a great high chimney. You only need to take the chimney stack up to the, the height of the kiln itself and you'll find that that is sufficient, works perfectly well and it's got enough pull or enough draw, you know, that's just that chimney there. So, uh, the, next, the next thing I have to do is put the next ring on here, the next ring and in fact that this kiln has got uh, three rings. Well, you can see you can see some of these 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 rings uh, over here. Um, if I can manoeuvre this tripod, there's another one there. You can see these rings. You see. Well, I'm going to I'm going to get one of those rings and 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 drop him on on top of that. And I'll I'll do another clip. I know I've done this all before. You've all seen it before, but. Um, it doesn't hurt to see it again, does it? There. So, I've, the beauty of this kiln is it, it gives a better for higher temperature work because you get less, less temperature difference between the top and the bottom, it's more even. So you can generally, you know, get a more consistent, consistent result with it. Um, okay, so one other thing, this kiln is made out of this very, very soft brick. This is an old scut kiln, an old electric scut kiln. Um, but these bricks are, are fine for cone 10. They work good. All right, okay, Simon Leach saying, get ignited, <laughs> be inspired and keep practicing. We'll see you soon, bye bye. Dee dee dee.